I mentioned Lynn already, and Lynn was probably the closest of my Arkansas cousins to my age. He and I were both born in 1947. He, I think he was born in August. I was born in uh, March. And then beyond Lynn was Billy Moneyham, and he was born in September. So the three of us were the three that were born in 1947 and the closest in age, and we were close as children. Uh, in fact, Bill lived in uh, Indiana for a year or two. Uh, they lived in a upstairs apartment above the old uh, Denny DX station at the corner of 16th and O. Uh, I got a picture of that old building somewhere. I might put it in this video if I can find it. That's where they lived. Uh, and uh, Uncle Jay worked as a mechanic at Hildebrand Ford on 5th and 5th and Lincoln. They didn't stay there very long, maybe a year, year and a half. and. Uh, they moved back to Arkansas and then to California, but those uh, were the ones closest to my age, and uh, I got to see a picture of Bill, but Bill didn't make it to this trip. I would have liked to have seen Bill. Uh, Bill, I invite you to come to my place on the 4th of July this year uh, if you want to uh, get the directions from me and come in and spend some time with us. Uh, Deborah will be here from her home in Kentucky. Um, Deborah, might as well talk about her for just a minute while I'm talking about this. Never met her. Uh, far as I know, never met, never even met her mother. I've seen a lot of pictures of her and knew of her from stories and pictures. Kay, the oldest of the uh, Mooneyham grandchildren, the oldest, the first of 41, was her mom. Uh, but. Deborah, a delightful person herself, and even more than that, I heard, uh, I don't know how I did this, I forgot what her daughter's name was. I talked to her on the phone the other day, and I, I had to say, remind me what your daughter's name was, and uh, I felt like an idiot whenever I uh, got the answer to that question, because she said, Jenny Claire, and I, she's named after uh, great-grandma Jenny Claire, and I said, and I heard her tell people that at least 15 times while we were on the visit. I don't know how that got, I slipped my mind, but, you know, I'm getting old. Uh, I'm too old to be president. Uh, at least I'm getting pretty close to being too old to be president. Um, Jenny Claire is her daughter's name. And it, what impressed me even more was her her daughter's children, her grandchildren, which would have been, I don't know, great greats to Jenny Claire maybe. Uh, those two young people and their interest in all these people that they never met, uh, their interest in their lives and their family and their family heritage and their uh, interfacing with the people there and wanting to learn and wanting to uh, find out who these people were and what their place was in Mooneyham family history. Uh, I was impressed and blessed by those two young people uh, being that way. And, and Deborah told me the other day, they're looking forward to coming here and spending time with me and my family and Kurt and his family and Clint's family here on the 4th of July. That, that blessed me. That blessed me to hear that. At Glenn's on Saturday night for a little while, uh, Dana Mooneyham, uh, and sh she is one of those cousins in, in that situation and her relationship to me that uh, I talked about earlier. Her dad was one of the older of my first cousins, probably the oldest, the oldest uh, male. I think he was older than Farrell, uh, Jimmy Donald. He was Uncle Wesley's boy, and he was not like a cousin to me until I was probably uh, in my 60s before I felt like he was my cousin and, re and dealt with him on that basis as my cousin and our discussions and our interfacing. Before that, he was like an uncle to me. He was too much older than me to be a cousin. He had children who were almost my age. Terry was, she was the eldest. And I think her name is actually Teresa, but I never knew there was anything but Terry. She uh, probably 
Kurt's age or just a little younger than Kurt. So, and then Dana and Van, or Van and Dana, I think it's Dana and Van, and then they got a younger sister who uh, I couldn't even remember. They told me what her name was, but she was enough younger than me. They was the other end of the spectrum. But Dana and Van were there. I hadn't seen them since we were children. Uh, I'd seen uh, Dana and kept up with her goings-on as a result of Facebook over a few years, but I hadn't seen Van, hadn't seen anything about him. I'd heard stories about him and read newspaper clippings about him because he had some difficult times in his life. He made some decisions that weren't good decisions. Uh, he got involved in things that weren't good things to get involved in. And uh, so he had some hard times, difficult times. And most of the stories that I'd heard about him over the years since we were children were stories like that or about that, like that, uh, about that subject of his troubles more than anything else in his life. And so uh, I was blessed to see him. Not only blessed to see him because I hadn't seen him in forever, but blessed to see how well he looked because he looked a whole lot better than I could have imagined him looking uh, based on the stories that I'd heard about some of the abuses that he'd uh, been subject to in his lifetime. He, he looked good. He looked healthy. He looked happy. And he seemed like he's gotten hold of uh, a lot of things. I, I listened to some of his stories, was blessed by some of his stories. I could hear... Uh, pain and suffering in some of the stories. I could hear confusion and I could even hear uh, uh, other situations in some of the stories that he was telling. He wasn't talking directly to me. He was talking to Glenn and some others there at Glenn's. But I, I was hearing some stories about some of his struggles, about some of his difficulties. And I was blessed. I was I was blessed in, on some occasion and and amused on some and and I got some insight to some things on others just being an eavesdropper on the stories that he was telling but overall overall glad I went glad Van was there glad to see him in way better shape than I ever expected to see him based on some of the things I'd heard about him and. Glad to see that he's uh, making his way uh, in a in a better and more positive vein than I had thought I was going to see him in. I want to tell one, actually two more stories, and now I'll hopefully wind this thing up. I heard a story that Dub told. And I'm going to illustrate this story at the end with a couple of pictures. The, the, the pictures aren't necessarily related to the story, but they are kind of, and I'll tell you what that is. Dub told a story. He said, did you ever know of the, the old dog that your daddy had named Trailer? Well, no. I said, I, I didn't. Uh, and he started telling about the time Dad, daddy had a horse. My dad, Hollis, he had a horse, and uh, he talked about the horse. I can't remember the horse's name, but the horse, what kind of horse it was, and things like that. He also had a dog. The dog's name was Trailer, and that dog was so smart that when Hollis wanted to go somewhere on his horse, he would say, Trailer, go get that horse and bring him here. And Trailer would go out in the pasture and bring that horse back to dad. Dub said that old horse was, that, that horse was ornery and hard to catch. That dog could bring him right to Hollis, he said. He said, that's one of the smartest dogs I ever saw. Some kind of a shepherd. Yeah, some kind of a herding dog probably in his breed. He was a mixed breed dog, a mutt, but had, had a lot of, I don't know, border collie or, uh, Australian Shepherd, some of that, some of that in his breeding, and uh, 
he'd bring that horse to dad and dad and get on his horse and go wherever he was going to go. And so based on that dog story, these next couple of pictures I'm going to show you, there's something I learned from a dog. And it's good to see that I'm the, not the only Mooneyham that learned this from a dog. When you get in a situation where you can't do nothing else, you can't get away, you can't do anything about where you are or what's going on, and uh, you wish you could, the best way to handle it is do what a dog does when he gets in that situation. Just lay down and take a nap. Just take a nap, and uh, when you wake up, uh, maybe the situation will have changed. <laughs> and so here's Dub, and here's Donnie, and they learned this from a dog, and I know uh, that they did because I, I learned the same thing early in life, and that's where I learned it from a dog.